Let me go over some nutrition terminology. I'm going to introduce you to nutrients and calories. We'll look at the characteristics of a sound diet, the results of a sound diet, although I have a feeling you probably know what they are. Look at health and malnutrition. A nutrient is a chemical. That's the first thing I want to tell you. Nutrients are chemicals. Everything is a chemical. I don't want you to be afraid of chemicals. I want you to remember, if I haven't said it yet, if you haven't heard me say it yet, it's the dose that makes the poison. So anyway, nutrients are molecular substances that are nourishing or provide nourishment to every cell and thus every cellular component of the human organism. Nutrients can be essential or non-essential. Essential nutrients are the ones that the body can't make or make enough of and therefore they must be consumed in the diet. And without intake, without consuming these foods over time, specific deficiency symptoms can develop that can be reversed when that nutrient is added back to the diet. That would, that's what makes it essential, that you have to consume it. We have energy producing nutrients and in our little world where I'm the benign dictator, energy means calories. So energy producing nutrients are the ones that we get calories from. Non-energy producing nutrients do not provide calories but can have other important functions. We have six categories of nutrients. We have the macronutrients, the ones that provide us with calories. And these are the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And I should include that these are the essential energy producing nutrients. And then we have the essential non-energy or non-caloric nutrients, our vitamins and minerals, which can also be referred to as micronutrients, and water. Carbohydrates and proteins give us four calories per gram. Fat is nine calories per gram. Alcohol is seven calories per gram. Now, if you noticed, alcohol was not on the previous slide because alcohol is not an essential nutrient. So if you are experiencing symptoms when you don't consume alcohol, it's not because it's essential. It's because you're an alcoholic. Talk to somebody. I have a note, a little asterisk down here that says fiber is a non-caloric carbohydrate. Well, when we talk more about carbohydrates, fiber is a carbohydrate, but we don't get calories from it, and we'll talk about why. The ultimate fuel used in our body is a chemical called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. We capture that chemical energy between the carbon to carbon bonds of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And that's what forms ATP. And then when we metabolize carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, when those bonds are broken, that ATP is released. And that's the energy that powers every reaction that goes on in our body. Muscle contraction, nerve impulse transmission, heart beating. ATP is the energy currency of the cell. Nicknames for these different energy producing macronutrients. Carbohydrates are known as the high performance fuel. We'll talk about that in module four for those of you that have the book where we talk about fitness. Carbs are the best and fastest at providing ATP during high intensity activity. But we also use it for lower intensity activities. But for long term, lower intensity exercise or activities, we use fat and we'll talk about that. Proteins are the building blocks for growth and repair of tissue. Only under intense, stressful situation do we get ATP from protein. We don't want to use protein for energy. What does non-caloric mean? It means we don't get ATP from it. It's not able to generate ATP. It has no caloric value. Some non-caloric nutrients can be essential for the body. We'll talk later in the semester about vitamins and minerals and water. The goal of eating is to fuel and nourish the body optimally. And it should taste good. As we continue to review the terminologies used in nutrition, I just want to start by saying food keeps us alive by providing calories or energy and nutrients. And the relationship between calories and nutrients is called nutrient density. This refers to the amount of nutrients provided relative to the number of calories. Foods with high nutrient density are more nutritious. So if we compare a large potato to a small order of french fries, both 
210 calories, which would you say is more nutrient dense? That's right, the baked potato. However, well, I decided it was baked. That doesn't mean you should never have French fries. Of course you should have French fries. Remember, it's the dose that makes the poison. And if we compare a cup of plain yogurt to a half a cup of vanilla ice cream, both coming in at 130 calories, we know the yogurt's more nutrient dense, but that half cup of vanilla ice cream, well, first of all, who eats a half a cup, is less nutrient dense. Does that mean you should never have ice cream, vanilla or otherwise? Of course not. So nutrient density, given the same amount of calories, French fries and ice cream provide less nutritional value but you should enjoy them. The results of a sound diet are health. And health is not just the absence of illness. It's your state of physical, mental, and social well-being. That's why I include French fries and ice cream as part of a sound diet, because we're talking about how you eat over time. The results of a poor diet are, is malnutrition. Mal means poor or the impairment of health that results not just from deficiency of nutrients but from toxicities, too much, or an imbalance of nutrient intake or poor utilization by the body. So malnutrition can refer to undernutrition but also overnutrition. And this last part here there are no healthy or unhealthy foods. It's the choices we make over time that have an effect on our health. I want to talk to you about acute versus chronic illnesses with respect to nutrition. All right, so acute illnesses come on suddenly. They're often painful and they may be fatal. Chronic illnesses develop slowly over time. They're generally painless and they're not fatal. And what I'd like you to think about for class are what are some nutrition related acute and chronic illnesses. So to summarize, food nourishes the body. It contains nutrients that can be essential, non-essential, caloric or non-caloric. Nutrition is the study of how food nourishes and affects body functions throughout the day and health over time. The goal of eating should be to fuel and nourish the body optimally and it's important to consume a healthy diet in order to promote health and prevent chronic illness. Now I have prevent underlined because I want to tell you don't use the word prevent. Use the word reduce risk. Okay, words, reduce risk. Nothing can prevent chronic illness. Nothing can prevent I'm sorry, I can't promise you that following certain behaviors will prevent illness or disease. That's where genetics comes in, that's where lifestyle comes in, that's where things that you may not be able to control, your environment, your social or economic situation, those things also have an effect on the development of disease. So we talk about nutrition as one of the steps that can help reduce the risk of chronic illness. Okay, see you later.